Aime-moi mon ami Aimes-tu la liberté Voudrais-tu t'enfuir d'ici Aimerais-tu t'évader Veux-tu revivre à la vie Marcher sans chaîne à tes pieds Oh, réponds-moi, mon ami Aimerais-tu t'évader Je sais comment Comment scier tous ces barreaux Qui sont là en guise de rideau Je sais comment Comment faire sauter les verrous entre la liberté et nous Je sais comment Comment faire tomber en poussière ce mur énorme d'énormes pierres Je sais comment Comment sortir de ce cachot fermé comme les un tombeau Je sais comment revoir des fleurs sous un ciel bleu je sais comment avoir le cœur libre et heureux. Tu ne dis rien, mon ami, mais tu as au fond des yeux plus de rêve que d'envie pour voir ce coin de ciel bleu. Tu crois que je t'ai menti que je n'ai pas de secret Pourtant tes yeux l'ont compris C'est eux qui sont dans le vrai Je sais comment Comment faire tourner sur ses gonds La porte en fer de la prison Je sais comment Comment faire voler en éclat Les boulets qui gênent nos pas Je sais comment Comment briser de nos mains nues Toutes ces entraves sans être vues Je sais comment Comment sortir de ce cachot Sans risquer d'y laisser la peau Je sais comment revoir des fleurs Sous un ciel bleu je sais comment avoir le cœur libre et heureux. Écoute-moi, mon ami, aimes-tu la liberté Voudrais-tu t'enfuir d'ici Aimerais-tu t'évader Veux-tu revivre à la vie Marcher sans chaîne à tes pieds Oh, réponds-moi, mon ami Aimerais-tu t'évader Je sais comment Comment scier tous ces barreaux Qui sont là en guise de rideau Je sais comment Comment faire sauter les verrous Entre la liberté et nous Je sais comment Comment faire tomber en poussière Ce mur énorme d'énormes pierres Je sais comment Comment sortir de ce cachot fermé comme les qu'un tombeau Je sais comment revoir des fleurs sous un ciel bleu Je sais comment avoir le cœur libre et heureux Tu ne dis rien mon ami Mais tu as au fond des yeux de rêve que d'envie pour voir ce coin de ciel bleu tu crois que je t'ai menti que je n'ai pas de secret 
pourtant tes yeux l'ont compris C'est eux qui sont dans le vrai Je sais comment Comment faire tourner sur ses gonds La porte en père de la prison Je sais comment Comment faire voler en éclat Les boulets qui gênent nos pas Je sais comment Comment briser de nos mains nues Toutes ces entraves sans être vues Je sais comment Comment sortir de ce cachot sans risquer d'y laisser la peau Je sais comment revoir des fleurs sous un ciel bleu Je sais comment avoir le cœur libre et heureux Good morning, everybody. It's not quite lunchtime yet on the 4th of December, 2019. And a very warm New Zealand late spring, early summer day. Welcome to podcast number 37, which I've entitled The Guardian. So I think this is about my third attempt at this video now. I went uh, bush for a few days camping. We had a beautiful sunny day for a week and uh, it rained for two days. Which I don't mind when I'm out camping but no good for recording video. The audio just gets completely messed up by the sound of the rain. Uh, at the same time, for anybody who doesn't watch the news or who doesn't live in, in this part of the world, Australia's had big bushfires and the smoke from those bushfires has been blowing across the Tasman Sea towards New Zealand and so we've had about two weeks of the air here being covered in smog, smelling of burnt wood and it's been making my eyes itch and my nose itch badly two weeks um, I can't believe that all that smoke made it all the way across the Tasman Sea here to New Zealand interesting sunrises and sunsets for a few days though and I think we're in the tail end of it now so I, I excuse me if I keep rubbing my eyes but my eyes are itching like mad and there is still a smell of burnt wood smoke in the air So, previously in this subject matter of Hermetic Initiation, I've talked about issues leading up to beginning authentic training, and I've talked about what the school I belong to delivers as far as basic training is concerned. So all of that is a lead into the real serious part of initiatic training, hermetic initiatic training. And the subject for today, the Guardian, or what has been more accurately referred to in past times in the Western Hermetic tradition, the Guardian upon the threshold, we now formally begin a discussion on actual initiatory training, the real stuff, when what the tutor does begins to seriously affect the psyche of the student and changes 
can be made which will completely alter the future nature and direction of the student's life. So the title, The Guardian Upon the Threshold, is not one which is discussed widely within the Western esoteric mainstream school system, esoteric school system. And I think this is largely because most of the individuals who created these modern esoteric training systems, they, while it's highly likely that they knew about the concept of the Guardian upon the threshold, they didn't really know what it was, they couldn't include it in their training, and so they pretty much largely just kept their mouth shut about it. So because of that, if you've come across the term before, the chances are it's in discussion with somebody who has been reading sort of older literature where the subject has been discussed, or you're talking with somebody who has discussed this or heard it being discussed by people who have read about it. Most often this subject, the Guardian Upon the Threshold, is only really broached in older literature, and by older I mean uh, before the 20th century. Um, of course, there are publications in the 20th and after the 20th century that, that have discussed the subject, but they're not very widespread and therefore not very well known. <coughs> So, to begin with, I need to explain what this title refers to. The Guardian, the concept The Guardian, refers to a uh, psychological archetype. In other words, it refers to a part of your psyche. Not only your personal psyche, but the collective psyche of the human race. In other words, this is an intelligent, evolving, self-sustaining, autonomic piece of psychological software. It's intelligent, it's smart, it's evolving. And it has existed in the human psyche for countless eons. So it is, as part of its role as the Guardian, it has absorbed untold knowledge based on human experience about the role that it plays as the Guardian. So the first important concept to grasp here is that we're not talking about some blind force in the human psyche we're talking about a smart intelligent chunk of your personal psychology which watches your behavior has an attitude and if it starts interacting with you it can draw on eons of human experience in order to figure out what you're up to and what to do about what you're up to. So why The Guardian? This label or title refers to the role of this psychological entity in guarding the boundary which exists in the human mind between conscious awareness, what we are consciously aware of about ourselves in the world and the unconscious. There's a boundary between these two states of awareness, these two conditions of mind, which is often referred to as the wall. And uh, the guardian is the psychological entity whose task it has been given 
to guard coming and going between the conscious awareness and the unconscious. So as a living soul, an aware conscious entity yourself, when you cross, when your focus of awareness crosses between the outward objective conscious world and the unconscious world, such as when you go to sleep and fall into an unconscious state, the guardian entity is the entity that checks the coming and going, the to and froing between the unconscious and the conscious mind of sentient beings. So it's kind of like the border guard at immigration in a country. The second part of the title for this intelligence, the guardian upon the threshold, specifically refers to the entrance or gateway into the mysteries. That's the term used to discuss this concept in Western Hermetism, the gateway to the mysteries, or the gateway into the temple of the mysteries what is being referred to by the term the mysteries is the content of the unconscious mind if you can consider your waking consciousness everything that you have ever been aware of consciously everything that you are aware of consciously by looking at the world everything that you will be consciously aware of in the future is part of you that is the least part of your psychology. Um, some modern psychologists like to say that the part of the mind that we know about and are consciously aware of only makes up 10% of our actual total psyche. I would say it's probably more like 1%. Um, I think modern psychologists say 10% because they base it on what they know about the unconscious mind, which is very little. So let's say 1% of your psyche, 1% of the contents of your mind and its functions, makes up your conscious awareness. The other 99% of the content of your psyche is in your unconscious mind. And one of the important things about all of that unconscious content is that it contains things like the psychological entities, the intelligences that govern the functions in your body. So for example, there is a psychological entity and, and I like to describe them as being like a software program which governs the function of your heart. It governs where all the cells go in your heart, when certain cells die other cells grow to replace them. It uh, governs the structure and function of the muscles in your heart and the um, uh, uh, what do you call it, the chambers in the heart, the beating of the heart, how fast your heart beats and the relationship between your heart and your blood. All of these things run inside your body without you being consciously aware of. You can be consciously aware of parts of it, like for example, you can at the moment turn your focus onto your heartbeat and become aware of that but for most of your life you're completely unaware of your heartbeat or the beating of your heart or the function of your heart as an organ inside your body but while your heart is doing its job there are a whole bunch of systems that are governing the function of that organ and something has to be controlling those systems. And we refer to that something as an intelligence. And I often 
describe these intelligences as being like software programs that are designed to govern bodily functions. So this is one of the things that are contained in your unconscious mind. Um, all of the intelligences that run all of the systems in your body, your body temperature, your breathing, your digestion, um, the metabolism of uh, food in your body, the uh, uh, way your skin reacts to your external environment, your sight, your brain function, all of these things are governed by separate intelligences that tap into a body of programming which is as old as the human species itself. And all of these functions, more or less, but largely, go carry on their jobs uh, unconsciously inside our being. Um, some of the other things which are inside your unconscious are intelligences which are related to the function of your imagination and its relationship to how the world gets to be the way it is. Also intelligences which are related to the function of thinking. When you hear that voice in your mind as you're thinking about stuff that's going on in your daily life for example, there is an intelligent or there are intelligences which are governing the function of thinking itself. Um, your ability to dream is governed by certain intelligences and over and above all of this one of the most important things that is concealed inside your unconscious mind is your higher genius the part of you that governs everything about you it governs your view of the world your interaction with the world the functioning of your body the functioning of your mind the evolution of your soul the evolution of each individual incarnation that you have the higher genius is hidden deep inside your unconscious mind and governs everything about you so because all these governing functions exist in your unconscious mind it's a really good idea that nature has created one particular intelligence which is designed to keep you out of the unconscious mind and to keep the content of the unconscious mind unconscious. I know people for example who have extreme difficulty just getting out of bed in the morning catching a bus to work and dealing with a very simple employment job on a daily basis without getting themselves in a deep amount of trouble and they don't have enough intelligence or smarts to even eat properly enough to stop themselves from becoming ill. I know a lot of people like that and I'm sure people who are listening to this podcast know a lot of people like that so for example it's a very good idea to keep these people out of the un their, their own unconscious minds if they could get into their unconscious mind and tamper with the intelligences that are basically maintaining their life keeping their physical body their emotions their thoughts and their spiritual life in a healthy condition if those people could get inside their mind and tamper with that sort of stuff there would be a great deal of trouble on the face of this planet with many many people who live here so in order to stop this happening in order to stop idiots hacking the psyche nature has created an intelligence which in the Western Hermetic tradition we refer to as the guardian upon the threshold. And, I, and as I said, uh, the concept of the threshold or gateway uh, is a reference to the Hermetic tradition's concept of the temple 
of the mysteries. And this is the title that they give to the contents of the un unconscious. They refer to it as the temple of the mysteries. And that when you're being initiated, that you are being ushered into and guided within the temple of the mysteries. In other words, you're being trained by a teacher how to get access to your unconscious mind and how to behave in there in a way in which you won't kill yourself, make yourself physically or mentally unhealthy or do other people damage because this is another property of the unconscious mind. All human beings are linked together from their individual unconscious, their personal unconscious to the collective, through the collective unconscious mind to each other. So there's like a psychological internet that exists inside the unconscious mind. And one of the things that can happen through that psychological internet is that we can influence other people. And this is one of the departments of magic um, that's in the past some uh, magicians, occultists, have learned how to access the unconscious and influence other people through this collective psychological network. Like I said, for our own safety and for the safety of our race as a collective, there is a psychological mechanism a piece of psychological software, an intelligent psychological entity whose job it is to make sure that entrance into the unconscious mind, into the temple of the mysteries, is not violated by people who have no idea what they're doing. Now, because of this, one of the things that alchemists in particular have talked about where alchemy as a process is concerned is that they repeat an axiom which goes way back in alchemical history and can still be found in many respected alchemical works today and that axiom is our work meaning the great work of producing the Philosopher's Stone or of uh, spiritual emancipation. Our work begins in darkness and death. And what they meant by this axiom was that the very beginning of the spiritual journey is a interaction with the guardian on the threshold which is also referred to as the intelligence of darkness and death. In order to be reborn, in order to be spiritually emancipated, or as alchemists would say, in order to produce the elixir of life or the philosopher's stone, must die to the old animal self and be reborn to the spiritual self. In other words, all the passions and motivations of our lower functions, if you don't know what I mean by that, you haven't been listening to my early podcast where I talk about the Partsufim theory. The lower functions are the parts of our psychology that make up our incarnate awareness our incarnate being as a human being alive in physical reality. On the spiritual journey, on the journey of spiritual self-development, in other words, through the process of initiation, the first thing which must happen to the initiate is that they must die to their lower self and be reborn to their higher functions. In other words, they can't keep thinking like a normal person and get away with getting into the temple of the mysteries. 
they have to change the way they think and adopt the thinking mode of their higher functions and this is one of the main tasks of authentic initiation that is to take a normal everyday person and to alter their psychology so that they basically become possessed by their higher functions and their lower functions control of the individual's life by the lower functions is altered and almost completely negated this is what is referred to as becoming an adept or a spiritual being a spiritual being is not just somebody who sees and feels cool spiritual stuff a spiritual being is someone who has become the nature of their higher functions and who has taken their lower functions through the alchemical process of separation and purification in order to eliminate all base desires and goals and intentions. So the guardian upon the threshold, one of its main jobs is to ensure that people who haven't made this transition from a normal person who is motivated by their lower functions and become an adept or spiritually developed person who is only motivated by the aims and purposes of the higher functions if an individual trying to get into the unconscious mind into the metaphorical temple of the mysteries has not attained that state then it is the job of the guardian to shut the gateway between the conscious mind and the unconscious mind and to deny access and the way that the guardian does this for most people's experience if you stumble upon occultism try self-initiation for example and try to get yourself uh, involved in psychic things develop magical skills and get inside your uh, imagination and start toying with things this kind of behavior awakens the guardian upon the threshold because the guardian upon the threshold holds the keys to the mysteries which is another hermetic saying you can't safely and effectively get into the unconscious learn from it and learn how to manipulate it until you have befriended the guardian and that is what we in the Herodim group refer to as the enigma of the guardian it's a mystery and it's something that is only taught by an expert teacher who has already passed this trial and befriended his or her own guardian and gained safe and effective access to the content of the unconscious mind. This is one of the reasons why I've said many times in the past that there is no such thing as self-initiation. Uh, one of the common things about all popular level teachings about self-initiation is they mention nothing about this guardian because the individuals who write these books and encourage people to pretend that they can initiate themselves the people who perpetuate this garbage know nothing about the state of the guardian and haven't been through that state themselves because if they had of known about the guardian and had of even had a wrestling match with it and knew what it was whether they succeeded or not they would know that you can't enter in through the threshold to the temple of the mysteries without successfully solving the puzzle of the guardian now i know that there are people listening to this who are going to think this is a load of rot and all i'm going to say 
to those individuals is ignore me then don't pay any attention to anything that I say and go and do things your own way encourage other people to do things your way write books about it make videos about it whatever ignore what I say if you think that this is a load of garbage and uh, don't take any of what I say onto your own shoulders and use it to uh, figure out how to deal with your own journey yourself. For those who may have some experience of the situation or who already know that what I'm talking about is a uh, factual situation that it actually does exist in the mind and it is related to the concept of initiation in the way that I am saying that it is I don't need to encourage them one bit to accept what I'm saying because they already know it's the truth for anyone who's in that in-between situation where they don't know enough about occultism to know whether what I'm saying is true or not and they don't remember having read anything about this anywhere or the school they belong to hasn't ever presented this information to them anywhere um, or their own behavior in the realm of occult activity has not uh, brought this situation to light for them personally if you're in that in-between space and you simply don't know all I can say is this if you keep toying with serious occultism at a mainstream level reading books and then putting what you read into practice and doing it inside of groups or by yourself and trying to learn and develop magic and um, even possibly develop an attitude about self-initiation and spiritual self-development if any of the activities that you get involved in start requiring you to turn your conscious awareness inward into your imagination and then start mucking about with what's inside your head in any amount of detail and regularly enough I guarantee that sooner or later you're going to find yourself in a wrestling match with the Guardian upon the threshold and in my lifetime I have met tons of people who have tried to educate themselves in esoteric knowledge sometimes they join schools or whatever but they always only just take out of those situations what they want for themselves what they've decided is acceptable and beneficial information throw everything else away and work it all out themselves oh this is what we all do this is what it's all about um, that occultism is kind of like an eclectic anarchic situation where there are no rules and people can basically do it whatever way they want if you have that approach and you maintain a, a regular intense serious focus on your own personal uh, occult development and, a, and any degree of that involves mucking around inside your head I guarantee that sooner or later you are going to have a run-in with a psychological archetype which is in the Western Hermetic tradition is known as the guardian upon the threshold to the mysteries okay if that happens this is the this is the the next thing to be aware of uh, even when an expert teacher is training a novice student you've gone through your basic training you're getting ready to move into advanced training and the first exercise that you're given is designed to draw out the guardian so that you can hopefully have a safe and productive interaction with the guardian which will lead you to solving 
the enigma of the guardian upon the threshold. Whether you're doing this yourself or whether a teacher is guiding you through it, the same kind of situation happens either way. The guardian's first rule is to stop you. And there are various ways that it can do this, but the rule of thumb about the way the guardian will deal with somebody who's trying to gain ingress into the unconscious mind with their conscious awareness. The rule of thumb about what happens there is that the guardian will pick on your personal weaknesses because he knows everything about you. He will stimulate and exaggerate those weaknesses and use them as a way of either frightening you away from achieving your esoteric goals or scaring the living daylights out of you generally or distracting you onto becoming focused onto things which do not involve trying to get access to the unconscious mind. That's his job, simply to try everything he can to stop you from getting access to the unconscious and the rule of thumb about the first way he will try that is that he will make use of your own weaknesses as weapons against yourself. If you're lazy, if you're uncommunicative with your um, teacher, if you're not very intelligent, if you're arrogant or prideful, if you have a narcissistic personality, if you have um, a predilection towards drug abuse of any kind or just recreational drug use or whatever, um, problems with your diet or with sex or whatever the weakness is that's easiest to manipulate, the guardian on the threshold will take hold of that weakness and use it as a weapon against you to either frighten you or distract you away from attempting to get access to the unconscious mind. So the question that most people are going to be asking at this point is, well then what does somebody do in order to stop that from happening? And the answer is that the ancient mystery tradition which is primarily a tradition of initiation and I say primarily a tradition of initiation because it is a tradition that says before you mess with alchemy or magic you need to succeed in initiation first because it cleans out your head and gets your mind functioning in a way that will allow you to see the subjects of magic and alchemy in the most safe and productive fashion. In order to get yourself into a situation where you can safely and effectively cross over that boundary and take your conscious awareness into the unconscious mind. You have to solve the enigma of the shadow or the guardian upon the threshold. And the solution to that enigma is so counterintuitive that I have never met anybody without any degree of encouragement who can figure out the solution to that by themselves. What it requires in actual practice is an expert who has already solved that enigma because they have been trained and guided properly through this stage of the work, the beginning of the great work, which begins in darkness and in death, by another expert who themselves has also been trained by an expert and so on and therefore they know the full nature of the guardian the full nature of its job and how it implements that job 
and the effect that it can have on you and does have on you once you start attempting to invade the unconscious mind with your conscious awareness. This is one of the reasons why I have said countless times in the past there is no such thing as self-initiation because self-initiation requires that somebody can stimulate the awareness, the attention of the guardian, figure out what the guardian is, how to deal with it, how to communicate with it, how to interact productively with it, and then solve the puzzle of how to get access to the keys to the gateway to the temple. <clears throat> it takes weeks and often months for an expert teacher to get a student to the point where they are capable of interacting with the guardian and then coming to the epiphany themselves about what the solution to this enigma is. On a couple of occasions in the past <clears throat> I've even talked to students about what the solution to this enigma is without clearly pointing out what it was that I was discussing with them and then when they found themselves in a situation through interacting with the Guardian of needing to realize that there's a puzzle and then to find the solution to the puzzle they simply couldn't muster the awareness of the situation and enough personal intelligence to solve the situation to solve the puzzle effectively <clears throat> so it's a very difficult situation and one which as I said at the beginning of this podcast most occultists even serious ones have never even heard of this situation and I'll give an example of how historically this concept turns up in popular or mainstream occultism but is not really known about by the people who put those references there they don't really know the real nature of this issue and then students who later on read those uh, statements or discussions about the Guardian don't realize what it is that they're looking at and um, don't recognize what's being presented in the discussion for what it actually is and the, the perfect example is in the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn in the very first initiation degree the degree of neophyte there is a stage during the initiation where the candidate is brought around in front of an officer called the Hyrius. And the Hyrius is a symbolic representation of an aspect of the Guardian, a facet of the Guardian. And when the guiding officers bring the candidate round to stand in front of the Hyrius, who is dressed in black and holds a sword, and um, the Hyrius then presents his speech to the candidate to describe who he is and what his function is, he straight out says that he is the master of darkness and that he invokes fear. In other words, um, has the ability to manipulate your weaknesses. But he doesn't say, I am the guardian upon the threshold to the temple. <clears throat> but any student of the Golden Dawn system who goes through the neophyte ritual, or even who has read it enough times, and who studies the whole system in its historical context, as well as the things that the Golden Dawn says about its offices and its rituals inside its own system, 
it's not hard to come to the conclusion that the Hyrius represents a dude who is guarding the entrance to the temple. And then it's not hard to realise that the officers in the temple represent psychological entities or intelligences or what the ancients called the gods. And that therefore this guardian is a psychological entity and that being taken through the ritual, the initiation ritual in the Golden Dawn, is a dramatic reenaction in symbolic fashion of the journey that the initiate student takes through their own psyche. So it's not hard to put the dots together when you've studied the system enough. And the Hyrius during that particular speech to the candidate, and I'm not going to repeat it here because it's easy enough for anybody who is interested in the subject to find the reference I'm talking to. Um, I think if you just Google Neophyte Ritual of the Golden Dawn, you'll find web pages that have copies of the whole ritual there, and it's not hard to find the reference that I'm making to the part of the Neophyte Ritual where the Guardian addresses the candidate and basically tells the candidate all the things that can go wrong when he's trying to get entrance into the Temple of the Mysteries, and that it's the Guardian who's responsible for those things going wrong. So it's really hard to tell <clears throat> whether the authors of the Golden Dawn system really, really knew what the Guardian was and what its actual authentic role in the journey of initiation was. It's hard to tell whether they really knew. All we know is that in the Golden Dawn system itself, there is no practical technique for dealing with the Guardian. There is no actual psychological or magical technique for overcoming the function that the Guardian plays, which is to stop you from getting into the Temple of the Mysteries. So I think um, either the authors of the Golden Dawn simply inherited these concepts and put them into the ritual, or they used a ritual where the, these concepts are already discussed and they never really knew what they were. Or they knew what they were, they knew what the Guardian was, and they knew it somehow was connected with the process of initiation, but they didn't know what to do about it. Because there is no argument. There is a very specific thing that needs to be done about the Guardian if you are to succeed on the initiatory path. And this has to happen right at the beginning of training. Because, as the old alchemist said, our journey begins in darkness and in death and what they were talking to t talking about was the journey to spiritual self-realization or spiritual emancipation the great work <clears throat> so we know in the past in the deep historic past people knew exactly what this thing was they knew that the mind was made up of intelligences that govern all our functions and that there are intelligences that do other stuff, like the Guardian. They knew the Guardian was there, and they knew the role the Guardian played and what to do about it. Because there are hints in the ancient mysteries about the fact that the priestcrafts of those old cultures understood the Guardian situation and knew what to do about it. Although, I have never seen anywhere in publication or in ancient archaeology any record which describes the actual solution to the problem. In my experience that solution is only ever allowed to be transmitted by one expert who has already been through the system themselves to a student who is coming through the system. So the last thing I'm going to say about this whole guardian situation is that having an expert teacher is no guarantee of succeeding in getting through the gateway into the unconscious mind, into the magical realm, into the temple of the mysteries. Having an expert teacher is no guarantee of succeeding in that. And most people who even get access to an expert teacher never succeed in it. Only a very small number do. 
I've known a number of people in my own career as a initiator in the Western Hermetic tradition who have gone through the stage of training at the beginning, the stage of blackness at the beginning of the alchemical process of initiation and have reached knowledge and conversation with the higher genius but have not made all the right connections have not developed the right behaviors and have not cleaned out their psyche enough so that by the time they get to knowledge and conversation with the higher genius they can effectively and honestly claim to be an advanced adept a real advanced adept so there are people who get to that stage and who aren't. All they have done is approach the process by rote. Please do A, B and C and then we'll move on to the next stage and they do A, B and C without thinking about it, without considering the meaning of the process and without learning anything from the experience of carrying out those practical tasks. <coughs> it is possible to get to knowledge and conversation with the higher genius by simply doing everything by rote but that will not guarantee that when you reach that goal that then you deal with that goal productively because what that requires is an understanding of everything that has gone before on the journey and then an altering of your behavior as an initiate in appropriate ways in order to make your mind conducive to spiritual self-development. So having an expert teacher is no guarantee of success in a situation. But not having a teacher is an absolute guarantee of never getting past the first stage of the work. I have never Never in all the hundreds of people that I have personally trained or the dozens of people that I have overseen somebody else training, I have never seen anybody manage to deal with the problem of the Guardian by themselves without the appropriate guidance of an expert teacher. It's simply impossible and nature would be absolutely stupid if it stuck all of the secrets of existence and of manipulating reality in our unconscious mind but that then let any old person go in there and muck around with that stuff it simply doesn't happen whatever it is that created this reality and created us and then put us in this reality is not stupid it's covered every base and it's made sure that the whole system works perfectly and part of that system is that entrance into the secrets about the system is guarded one last reference that I'll make about the subject before I finish this podcast for today is that there is a book by Rudolf Steiner and I only came across it because where I live here in Napier New Zealand not far from here there's one of the largest Steiner communities in the world it used to be the largest Steiner community outside of Dornoch in Germany <coughs> or wherever it is, Sweden or Germany or whatever. So there, there, um, within the esoteric community here there are a lot of anthroposophists and there's a lot of anthroposophical literature here. Um, and I can't remember off the top of my head but I think the book is Knowledge of the Higher Worlds and there is a chapter in that book called The Dweller Upon the Threshold or The Guardian Upon the Threshold. And in there, Steiner describes in detail his own personal interaction with the Guardian upon the threshold, and then he discusses the meaning of that interaction. 
of all of the literature that I've ever had access to about the serious nature of authentic initiation and spiritual development in the Western tradition, Steiner is the only person that I've come across who has openly admitted and described his experience with dealing with the guardian upon the threshold. I've seen other very learned Western occultists mention the concept and even talk about little pieces of what the guardian is, but I've never seen anybody admit that they went through the wrestling match with the guardian themselves and then explain the mechanics of what that's all about. Steiner's the only one. And because of that, even though I don't really like Steiner's books myself, I find them very difficult and a bit wishy-washy and too mystical and religious in nature, um, I respect the guy because it's obvious, to me anyway, and to anybody else who has gone through this initial experience in advanced training, this first stage, um, that Steiner was a true initiate. He did get through the first stage of initiation, uh, even though we will probably never know how it was that he got access to that experience himself. He describes it in some detail. Uh, I didn't find Steiner's reference and read about it until well after I had had a number of students who had bumped up against that experience themselves and until, and until I had actually gone through it myself. And then after that, way back, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, um, 25 years ago, uh, I stumbled across Steiner's book because my laboratory alchemy teacher was a big fan of anthroposophy and of Steiner's writings. And then I stumbled across that book, that chapter, and read that description and recognized immediately that it was the same thing I had experienced and that I had seen other students of mine in the early days. While I was still learning about all of this, um, they had bumped up against the experience themselves as well. And what I experienced with them was exactly the same as what Steiner had described in detail in his book. So I highly recommend that. I think it's Knowledge of the Higher Worlds and look for the chapter, which is about two-thirds of the way through the book by memory, called The Guardian or the Dweller Upon the Threshold. Okay, so here's the, here's the lesson of this podcast. Number one, self-initiation simply doesn't exist because in order to get into initiation, to begin that path, to start the serious work of that path, you have to first get past the guardian upon the threshold. And the first problem with that is most people have no idea what that's about. The second problem is in order to meet the guardian and deal with it productively and then recognize the uh, uh, puzzle that exists and solve it, you have to have a whole bunch of skills such as a knowledge of psychology, standard psychology. <clears throat> you have to have practical psychological tools. You have to know a lot about the imagination and the use of the imagination. And you have to have a good teacher to show you all this stuff. Um, because otherwise you simply, even if you bump into the Guardian and are uh, excited and it starts to uh, do its thing on you, you're not going to have the foresight or the experience or the skills to to deal with the situation. A whole bunch of things have to come together, which we teach in basic training, that make it possible then for the student to deal with the first stage of the advanced work properly. So that's the primary lesson of this podcast. No th such thing as self-initiation because the first step in self-initiation is that you have to deal with the guardian upon the threshold. The, the next lesson, lesser 
lesson in this podcast is <clears throat> I know a whole bunch of people who believe that they have met with the Guardian and dealt with it productively simply because they got to knowledge and conversation with the higher genius. And that is not a measure of dealing with the Guardian successfully because I have demonstrated, even in public, that you can take virtually anybody, if you know what you're doing, and give them access to their higher genius, allow them to feel how wonderful that is, chat and get interesting, wonderful information and everything, and they don't have to be an initiate at all to have that experience. There is an enormous difference between approaching the higher genius and having a fun time, what I call the Timothy Leary experience, getting high but not knowing what it means or what to do with it. There's a big difference between that and approaching the higher genius after having succeeded in dealing with the guardian upon the threshold successfully and safely. That changes everything. You can't make the Philosopher's Stone unless you first go through all the steps in the process leading up to the stone properly. History is full of a number of examples of people who have found the power of transmutation. John D and Edward Kelly are a good example and how they screw up their lives because of getting access to that without knowing what it means or how to get there. Historically, there are a number of examples of people back in the early-ish Western mystery tradition who found somebody else's powder of transmutation, someone else's philosopher's stone, and then used it for whatever purpose and then completely ruined their lives because of it. You can't skip all the stages and the process and grab the end goal and say, now I'm going to do with this what I want. It doesn't work like that. And one of the <coughs> absolute basic requirements to assure, to assure that you don't screw up things in the end is that you have to succeed in dealing with the guardian upon the threshold. So, thank you very much for listening again to this podcast. I hope that was educational and at the very least acted as a stimulus for further research and helped add another block to the building of the edifice of the story of initiation that I'm providing. And now that we've dealt with that first stage of dealing with the Guardian, in the next podcasts that are coming, I'm going to talk about the actual advanced training, what kind of exercises are involved, what's expected of a student, what they achieve, and I'm going to talk about everything between the Guardian and just before knowledge and conversation with the higher genius. That's going to be the next podcast, podcast number 38, I think. And then the last podcast in the series probably will be where I talk about knowledge and conversation with the higher genius, what it is that allows us to have that, the qualifications for doing it successfully and safely, and then where you go from there. Marcher sans chaîne à dépiller, aurait pour moi mon ami, aimerais-tu t'évader? Je sais comment, comment scier tous ces barreaux qui sont là en guise de rideau. Je sais comment, comment faire sauter les verrous entre la liberté et nous. Je sais comment, comment faire tomber en poussière ce mur énorme d'énormes pierres. Je sais comment. Comment sortir de ce cachot fermé comme les qu'un tombeau Je sais comment revoir des fleurs 
sous un ciel bleu Je sais comment avoir le cœur libre 